Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right hand corner we have PSI Grast. And bottom left hand corner we have Ash, Art of Turtle. And I believe both these guys are legit. I'm familiar with Grast in passing. I haven't seen him play a lot of games. I have seen him on ladder here and there. Art of Turtle I have seen in 80s Mullet Chat and participating in a lot of the King of Hills. And he is actually a fairly decent Zerg. And as you can guess, sometimes, oftentimes, likes playing that defensive Zerg style. This is going to be on BSL Apopocla Bombastic Eclipse. I think that is the right pronunciation. Two-player map. So it's Eclipse, but with kind of the BSL markings. Two-player map. Protoss versus Zerg. Again, casting this live on Twitch TV. If you want to check it out, that is Twitch TV backslash ADC. I'm going to try to make a regular schedule of that on hopefully Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's no promise or guarantee. Looks like Grast is going to go ahead and put that pylon at his natural expansion. Probably setting up for a forge fast expand. We'll see if Art of Turtle... One thing on two-player maps is on two-player maps, Zerg oftentimes will go in earlier spawning pools. So they don't have to deal with the harassment of that initial probe scout and placing that initial hatchery unless they feel very, very confident in the drone micro. I mean, some players have seen, they're just like, oh yeah, you know what? My drone micro is just going to be able to crush all this, uh, so I don't have to worry about it. But instead, it looks like we are in fact seeing an overpool, so overlord on 11 spawning pool, or sorry, overlord on 12 spawning pool on 11, which is typical these days. Again, to deal with that pro press, particularly on two-player maps, Forge is planted for grass opposite side, but I'm almost curious if what Art of Turtle is going to walk into. The, again, the common thing these days is 973, and it's really put Protoss in an interesting position. It's made the early game really, really, really tight. But I almost feel like if you can survive the early game as Protoss, I have rarely see, seen Zergs get to late game with 973. They either seem to win it early, just straight off with the Hydralisk bust, or we're just getting absolute dominant economic control, we're just getting five bases and tons of stuff out there before their opponent's really able to deal with it. Looks like, and this is what I'm talking about, that probe harass. Uh, is he going to get it down? No. Nice disruption from Grast. He's already done significant damage. He's actually doing, oh, actually able to get it on the pull away. One thing you want to do with probes is pull that away to repair those shields, but as he pulled away, Art of Turtle able to sneak that down. It looks like as a result, he's going to skip all, well, he's only building two Zerglings to try to chase down that probe scout, but otherwise just sticking to pumping drones. And this is going to be critical for Grast to kind of see what is popping out of these eggs, whether it is a ton of Zerglings or not, because that will depict whether you, how many cannons he puts down and how offensive he gets. Instead, he's going to go ahead and seeing just two Zerglings going to back out of the base at this stage. He does have a single probe on the front just in case, warping in that photon cannon, I believe... I didn't get a good look, but I'm wondering if he placed that Nexus before the cannon because of that scout that he had inside the base. I think the Zerglings were, yep, one kill. We're able to kill that probe scout. Second probe is moving to the north just to make sure he has additional scouting information that he can pull out in that base. Gateway up and still no gas, critically for Grast. So he's just going, he's just gone pure economy up to this stage, placed an additional pylon at the main of his base just uh, perhaps to build. It looks like an Overlord took a little bit of damage on that cannon getting a good scout at that front door. And when you see this as Zerg, you just have to absolutely assume that it is, in fact, going to be a 973. It looks like we do see that third base being built at the 9 o'clock position. We'll see if we see the drone saturation that is in kind. One critical thing with the 973 these days is you don't have to dedicate to just Hydralisks is part of the problem. You can switch to more of a Mutalisk heavy attack, and that is why that early Corsair scout is still so critical in getting a spot on all of those larvae. But the thing is, is if you miss it, for if your timing is off, just by a little bit, it can be game uh, from the pro so it just has really made the early it's really negated kind of just building nothing but Corsairs early for Protoss and it's really punished um, the early game and you just got to play it really 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 tight uh, I feel like Zerg yeah has actually been decent as far as the where the meta's at Again, I want to see how pros feel about this, but I feel like Zerg's had a little bit of advantage in the metagame in both the Terran versus Zerg and Zerg versus Protoss. And you can see this, the quality of both these players, I want to say, because they are looking very, very slick and everything. It just feels like they're just playing very responsive. Overlord sitting on the corner, seeing if you can spot anything. We do have a pylon down, just uh, grabbing gas, but still relying. Actually, no zealots produced at this stage from Grast, and I still do not see a... Interesting. I still do not see Stargate, which could be dangerous because the layer is just now finishing. He's going to rely on this probe scout to stay alive. So he's actually holding off. He's like, okay, if I can keep this probe scout alive, maybe see whether he plants down a hatchery or a spire, then I will know what I'm going to be responding with across this. But additional Zerglings being produced just, I think, to catch this probe scout to try to deny that information. Kills and places, yes, a spire in that back corner. And this could get dangerous for Grast. Because, okay, so Spy Gateway's going to come up. He's going to need that Corsair out. He is getting level 1 weapons. 
So maybe he has a sense of this. Maybe he's like, okay, you were trying to be a little bit sneaky and deny me information. I have a sense that you are in fact going air rather than just the straight 973. Because if you were going hydralis, you would have just placed that hydroden somewhere out in the field and gone from there. So instead, he needs to get this Corsair out as quickly as possible, get eyes on the base, and probably get cannons on his main, depending on how many Mutalisks are initially produced. Six Zerglings out in the front, I believe they uh, took out another, trying to get, yeah, so two kills, they were able to kill another Probe Scout that was out in the field. It looks like Arda Turtle had that Overlord swept the corners and is now backing off with this. Two cannons on the front, and see, this is where it's dangerous, is placing these cannons here rather than back by the Nexus. That's going to be even more resources that need to be sunk into defending... Uh, this back area, and right now I, I'm very, very concerned for Grass. This is a late Corsair to be able to scout this, and I don't know that he's going to have cannons in his mineral line warped in to deal with the Mutalisks. It depends on how many, this is going to be the critical thing, how many larvae and how many minerals does Art of Turtle save in time to produce the amount of Mutalisks he wants. Two Zealots starting to move their way across the map. Honestly, uh, the Mutalisks, and the, this is where it might be worthwhile just to plant a sunken colony. It looks like Hydralis Den and Hatchery being placed. Those Zealots actually backing off. There's that first Corsair, and where does that Corsair go? Probe moving to the north. He is going to be able to see that Overlord, and he's going for the Corsair. He's just assuming he's got an idea on the tech, and I don't think he, he does have a good grasp on it. We'll see. But... As I say that, the, so Spire is up, but I don't see a lot of Mutalisks being produced. Just Hydralisk speed and Spines being produced instead. Huh. Go figure. Probe has managed to sneak out in the upper hand, right hand base. It looks like the Scourge going after that Corsair are going to reveal the fact that it is Spire, and that's going to put Grast in an odd situation. He's planting a, three additional gateways down, and he, a level one weapons is kicking in. He's getting that second Corsair. But I almost feel like Grast should respect this, right? He should get the cannons back in the mineral lines just in case or at least get a couple additional Corsair upon seeing those Scourge because that is legitimate risk. So there's that first cannon. There's another cannon in there. And that is going to be resources cost. So I almost feel like this is like a double, a double end around from Art of Turtle. He's showing the fact that he has a Spire. He's showing the fact that he's got kind of that critical... Uh, that air component where he could do damage here and that's causing Grast to invest more in air and in the meantime he has switched it back and decided to invest in first of all ground defenses so he can be a little bit more aggressive but just start that's allowing him to just drone up at these bases and produce more Hydralisks for what is a more delayed but and I think I missed uh, the Corsair it looked like I think either the Scourge died or they managed to pick off the Corsair and I think the Corsair got picked off uh, we'll see no the Scourge is still there thought I heard explosions Looks like it was that probe scout in the upper left-hand corner, that Zergling taking him out. Three kills on that Zergling. Wow, doing some work. So now the Corsair are moving out, but they are going to find a base from Art of Turtle that should have a significant amount of Hydralisks to be able to push these Corsair back. Although, as I say that, okay, so there's four right there to defend that location. There's one Overlord back here. And I think these Hydralisks are a little bit delayed, but there should be some movement. Maybe he's just going to sack it. Is he going to sack it and just hold that front just in case they're Dark Templar? No, okay, now that he, now he's going to move the rest of those Hydralisks in. This becomes a little bit difficult for... Ooh, that's enough Hydralisks to maybe pick that off. It's going to be close. Looks like he is going to be able to sneak out with a lot of life. Uh, level 2 weapons in range... Or sorry, level 1 weapons in range were just about to finish. Art of Turtle, I feel like, is in a pretty solid situation, though. Because, first of all, there's not a sizable ground army because of the delay, because of the investment in air. I think that's going to... We'll see if Grast uh, still goes for that level... Looks like he's gone Templar Archives instead. He does have that leg speed finishing. I'm wondering how much that delayed the Zealot leg, kind of the standard Zealot leg push pressure. And I feel like that also opened up Art of Turtle to drone a little bit heavier in that early game. So I'm going to give a little bit of an edge to Art of Turtle. Grast has a lot of pros, but he's still sitting at two bases versus three. Usually that's where you want to be as a Zerg player. Oof. Scourge just maybe trying to pick off something as far as Corsairs go. Those Corsairs... One advantage for Grast here is he's got those Corsairs. They have level 1 weapons. That's four of them. They are going to be able to deal with Scourge pretty easily in small numbers. But also, they're going to be able... Now that there's five Corsairs, they're going to be able to just tear through the Overlord count. So with these Hydralisks moving out, yeah, those Overlords need to stay nearby. That'll help against the Dark Templar, which looks like it... This actually might be lucky from Grast. He might be able to sneak out with this uh, Dark Templar as well. Hydralisks not engaging in a full group like they want to, where they can just micro back and forth. There's a secondary group that's pushing in, though. And if they're on attack move, they might be able to just crash on that front door. So yes, the Hydralisks might die in this back corner, but they might be able to take out the front in the meantime. And that High Templar is too energy off, and a Psystorm is not researched, so this could be devastating. Particularly if that High Templar gets picked off, because that would be a big component of this defense. Zealot's trying to swing back around to provide some additional defense, but honestly, the SimCity's going to end up working against them. 
Corsair is trying to get on top of the Overlords, but honestly, too little too late. It looks like he has managed to supply cap Art of Turtle a little bit, but I'm not sure that it matters because there's GG from Grast. Great play from Art of Turtle all the way around. And honestly, I feel like, whew, that was... I, feel, I don't feel like Grass played poorly. I feel like Art of Turtle just did a great job with the mind games. They're all the way around. So game one goes to Art of Turtle. We will hop into game two momentarily. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for listening.